Hi guys and welcome back to Davenport Delights. Delights. Today we're going to be making pasta pie with pasta in it. Yeah, and we have Vinya on the show today, who is the mother of the family. You haven't maybe actually you know you have met her in the Rocky Road video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Like, subscribe, of course. And let's just get on with the video and show you guys the ingredients. I wanted to show you a pot first. It's a, it's a rather long serving pot. I think it's been in about five different countries and it's still alive. So therefore get yourself a good pot. Get yourself the ingredients. Now I have a, a packet of pasta. Now last, uh, yesterday I went and got a packet of pasta from Waitrose. Alas, I have now become a Tesco's girl since living in Oxford and it costs 65p in Tesco's. It costs a lot more in Waitrose, so enjoy the kind of pasta that you're going to get today. It's exactly the same as the Waitrose pasta. Right, that's end of the advertisement for Tesco's. Um, the next bit of ingredient is a bit of tuna. Now, I always get tuna with oil in it and what has happened rather trendily is that of late people have reduced the quantity of oil in the tuna, making it a little bit less oily and therefore less fun. But nonetheless, a tin of tuna is all you need, just one tin. You also need a tin of tomatoes, and I have a tin of tomatoes, ordinary tin, and some tomato puree, which should be in the cupboard. A box, a box. Uh, here it is. It is a sophisticated box. Um, in Tesco's, you, it comes without a box. It's the same stuff. So there we are. Could you throw that away in the recycling? And so you've got your ingredients. And the next thing is the cheese. Could you bring me some medium-sized cheddar? And medium-sized and medium-tasty as well. So it tastes medium as well as being a medium size. There we are, this is medium. Oops! And a little bit extra. Right, it may sound obvious, but put some water in the bowl. Water, please. Uh, do we call it a bowl or a pot? Anyway, we call it something. Container. Water in the container. And in order to make sure that the pasta floats around in a rather floaty way, remember to add oil. Oopsie daisy, oopsie daisy. If I might just show you how to do this, add a little bit of oil so you make it even more oily than it should be. Um, and put that very carefully on the flame. The next step is to cover that pot up with a, with a pot top. If you have one, and if you don't, don't worry. If you don't, you can use a frying pan as a lid for the pot. This is what I'm doing now. And you see, I've just put the... It's a very useful thing if you have no lid for your pot. And now we wait for the pasta to cook, we wait for the hot water to boil, and in the meanwhile we do a task which is considerably difficult because you have to find a tin opener for this one. And oh, yippee, I found one. Unusual instrument and an unfriendly one because I normally like to get the tins which I can just scoop off, but alas, we have to try and we have to try and manipulate this. It's a nice old-fashioned one, so I think we can manage it. And goody, a little bit of oil is scooping out of the tin, which means it's the oily tuna. It's probably about four years old because they've stopped using oil in tuna. So anyway, this is a nice old-fashioned tin. It may have been in the cupboard for about five, six years. We've only had the house for ten years, so. Could you pour away the tuna? Now, oops, not the tuna, the oil, but not... <laughs> it looks a bit not, yellow. It is a little yellow, but the tuna, when it comes out of the sea, is probably yellow. Let us, let us, to get rid of the oil, would you like to look at the sell-by date? Although we do not believe in the sell-by date in our house, we are not going to... There is no sell-by date. This is before, this is older than the sell-by date syndrome. Goody. Smell it, smells perfect. So let's just put the oil, careful. Don't pour it over anything. Just put it there, darling. One has to be very careful with oil. Right, there we are, a dangerous pot. And then a lovely simple tomato. Look how modern. You don't need one of those tin openers. You open it up like that, and then you go, pull, and the whole thing opens. Isn't that marvellous? Marvels of modern world. And then you have your thing. You get a small little saucepan, I think is the word. And you hope there is one in there. Saucepan. Yes. Or saucepan. Or what they call saucepans. And look, I found the lid. So, it's, don't look, you find, but it doesn't work on my pot. 
so it goes back in there. And you therefore have this, a bit too big, but you scoop out with a spoon, you scoop out your tuna, gently does it, with a nice little bit of oil, goody. And it's nice old-fashioned oily tuna. And the tin, you, you put carefully there, I'll have to wash it later, damn ball. An oily tin. Now, the next job is to pour the tomatoes into the tuna. Bingo. Give it a nice little shake. You don't want to miss one little bit of tomato. And then you've got your tomato puree, which you open by stabbing the top with the top. It's quite exciting, that. And then you go from the bottom. Remember to spread it from the bottom, otherwise you'll waste some tomato puree. I was brought up in a household where one didn't have anything. So therefore, um, everything I have has to be used carefully to the bitter end. No wasting. And then you've got this delightful little mixture, lovely mixture which you mix around. A little bit of salt and pepper if you have any. And I think I might have some salt here. Is there any salt? Where is the salt? And is there any pepper? Oh, I find salt here. Oh. And could there be, but not too much for God's sake, because remember, fish, fish is salty. And then a bit of pepper, there isn't any in here, but you know, make a good, good kind of pretend. The, le poivre. Il faut le mettre là-dedans, mais il n'y a rien du tout. Uh, unfortunately, there is no pepper in the pepper pot, pepper pot, but if there were, it would be good. And then you put it on a low flame and you cook it so that it is hot. I mean, when I say cook, I mean heat. You heat it, there it is, on its little gentle flame, and then you've got that bit. And then you do the difficult bit, which I find very tiring. And you grate the cheese with a grater. So um, I think there's a grater in there, but there may not be. I think there are. Um, if there's no grater, I might have my assistant to do the grating, because I find grating tiring. Not, not, we don't use the B word here, but it is very tiring, grating cheese. So I have an assistant who will grate. If Unfortunately, we don't have a grater. We don't so have a grater. So therefore, no you grating. can do the next best thing we've it's left. Quite good, actually. You see, we great. have several graters, but there is one grater in Belgrade, there is another bell grater in Oxford, and there's another one floating around between the two places. So we need uh, to cut with a knife, with a simple knife. We do have okay. knives. So now we're just going to cut the cheese. But that is a very important it process. It is. And therefore should be filmed. <laughs> should <it? laughs> just in case you make a mistake in it. Get a little plate, because that makes one feel important. And just cut the cheese like that. Having had a little piece oneself, why not? A liberty. So you have the cheese, you cut it up nicely like this. And that is one of the most difficult parts of this, because you must avoid chopping off the finger. Right, there we are. More cheese. What are, this is a cheese bonanza. And, um, and now we're just going to cut the cheese. No, let us keep cutting the cheese, darling. It's rather important that people may not understand how to do it. I think people, well, the audience is know how to cut the cheese. Do they know how to cut cheese? You people out there, you probably don't, because well, you're so used to cheese Tell us in the graters. comments, do you, do you know how to cut cheese? And how does one cut cheese without cutting one's finger? That because is the question. There are so many hazards when one cooks. So many. Right. So while we do this, and we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to wait until the water boils in its pot and we're going to have a little break and what great joy I hear the water boiling what an exciting moment good I can't wait for it so I get the pasta and I dash it in there of course I spill half of it around the room but that doesn't matter it's a hazardous task hazardous because of the danger of the water bounding up into one's eyes hence I wear my protective glasses when I cook just in case one has the odd bit of water. Incidentally, this is all done very nicely. Right, the speed. I'm now cooking the pasta. I will take note of the timing of the pasta cooking, though I have cooked perhaps a million dishes of pasta in my life. I always find the trial, don't you? Um, so is it, how many is it? Now, nah, how many minutes? 11 to 13 crumbs. Okay, well, conveniently it's five o'clock, so there's no difficulty there. By 13 minutes past five, the pasta's going to be done. Now we need a big, Bowl for the pasta pie. Where is there one? Yes. Ali We mean we need one. You know which I, which kind I mean. Not the flat. Well, no, that's far too big. Oh, but we're not going to cook it tonight, so that's a joke. Uh, but 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 wait, warm. I should have told you that, should I? But anyway, I tell you everything. I take you entirely into my confidence. A bit more oil goes in there. And you see this, oh, should I have washed it? It's an odd ant. 
and torch two. Hasn't been used for about five years. Gosh, what a task. Once you've cooked the pasta and put it in the strainer, then you remove it and put it into back into the pot again. Now, you'll be electrified, I think, and I, I like specialising in surprises, by the size of the green beans. Now, this is only because this is for television. Otherwise, it doesn't normally happen. But I've made it really exciting. I've added some of yesterday's green beans. Um, that's a lovely thing to have done. Um, I'll eat a few of myself. It's delicious. And um, I then get the warmed tuna. And I start sort of feeding it in. You fold it into... Oh, golly! Into your pasta dish. How beautiful! It looks. I mean, doesn't that look fantastic? And we get the cheese and sprinkle it over. Lots on the edges. Um, oh, I think it's done. What do you think? Have a taste. Isn't that delicious? Mm. So I think that's mm. so basically what we've done. Yeah. So you just want to frankly kill me, by the way. But you have to put love into it, don't you? In heart. So we have now finished. We've done our pasta pie. So we've got the pasta in there. The sauce all combined, then just pop some cheese on the top, and that goes into the oven, doesn't it? Yes, it goes into the oven for 15 20 minutes, depending on your, depending crispy, on your crispiness. Crisp, well, not your crispiness, <laughs> but anyway, maybe yes, depending how crispy you are. If you're very crispy, it'll go in for longer. If you're less crispy or feeble like me and don't eat it at all, don't bother. <laughs> um, exactly. So, but, I think that's yeah. pretty much that. That probably is it. It's another one of those magic moments for you. Goodbye. So, Goodbye. Remember to don't forget to find us and subscribe. don't forget to like us and subscribe. and subscribe. And there will be more stuff if you can if you've enjoyed this. There's lots more to come. Comment down below what you want to see. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.